Do you have any interest payments that you need to report to the IRS? Watch this lesson as we discuss how to use property management to file 1099 interest income forms. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to explain how the information is retrieved from the database to print on the 1099 interest income forms, and you'll be able to generate, print, and e-file your 1099s. You know, we have to file 1099s for some interest payments that we made. Can you show me how? Of course. But first, let's go over what you should do before you file your returns. Before you pay the interest, make sure it's been accrued with the correct interest rate. And you should also reconcile the amount paid to make sure that you're reporting the correct amount. We'll take a look at a report to see how it's done in a moment. In addition, verify that you have the correct recipient information, like the name, taxpayer ID number, and address. Reporting requirements may change from year to year, so read up-to-date filing instructions to ensure that you are in compliance with the IRS. Yes, we download the instructions booklet from the IRS website every year. And make sure you install the year-end version of the software and the ATRIX update before you generate government tax forms and reports. The 1099 form that you'll need depends on the copy. For more information on which forms to order, refer to the Sage Knowledge Base article called Which Forms Should I Order for Year End? Whether you need the red pre-printed form or the blank perforated four-part form, Sage Construction and Real Estate Forms is your source. Use the contact information here to place your order. Yuna, can we go over what prints on the 1099 interest income forms? Let's look at the payer information first. When you generate the 1099 forms, you can manually enter the payer name, address, telephone, and tax ID number, or let property management retrieve the information from General Ledger. We can go over how that works in detail when we generate the forms. How about information for the recipients? It looks at the lease. From the Deposits tab, it pulls the interest amount paid for each type of lease and prints the combined total in Box 1, Interest Income. If the lease belongs to a property with the current period within the filing year, then it uses interest paid year-to-date. Yes, and if the property's current period is beyond the filing year, it will use the amount from interest paid last year. What if a lease has a revision with a deposit that also has interest payments? It prints one form for each lease revision. In other words, it combines the total interest paid on deposits for one lease revision on one form. Okay. I see it also prints the lease ID in the account number box. How about the recipient's name, address, and tax ID number? Where does that come from? From the lease. It determines which tenant receives interest payments and what type of address is used. Then it goes to the tenant record to find the appropriate address. This is also where it finds the recipient's name and tax ID number. I see. I should make sure that the lease and tenant information are correct before I file the returns. Yes. I'd like to reconcile the amount of interest paid before I file the returns. Is there a good report for this? Yes. You can use the Lease Deposits report that comes with your software. From the Reports menu, go to Reconciliation, then Lease Deposits. Enter the begin and end date of the filing year. And because you might have paid interest to tenants that have since moved out, Make sure you select the checkboxes to include historical leases and zero balance deposits on the report. Then click Start to print the report. The Lease Deposits report lists all the deposit types for each lease and lease revision. It also shows you the transactions for each deposit type for the date range that you had entered in the Print Selection window. 
This year-to-date amount is retrieved from the lease deposit record. Remember, this makes up the amount that prints in Box 1 of the 1099 interest income form. However, take note that the year-to-date amount corresponds to whatever calendar year the property is in. This means if the current period for this property is January 2020, then this interest paid year-to-date amount is 2020s. But what if that's not my filing year? If your filing returns for 2019, you can use the Report Designer application to change the report design to pull in the interest paid last year, 2019. In any case, the interest paid amount from the lease record should reconcile to the pay interest line items. What if they don't? Then you should correct the amount accumulated at the lease deposit level. But I can't access those fields. You'll have to activate the Audit Setup Activity option. That's easy for you to say. I have no idea what that means. What did you call it? It's the Audit Setup Activity option. Here, let me show you. Go to the Tools menu and select Options. Here we go. Check the box Audit Setup Activity. After you click OK, you'll have access to the software maintained fields that you normally can't access. You mean those fields that appear as lighter gray that my cursor won't go to? Yes, those are the ones. This option allows you to change them, but at the same time, it creates an audit trail of the changes that you make. But I have to warn you, this is a global setting, which means that anyone using Sage Timberline Office can access those system-maintained fields. So I should ask everyone to exit the software first? Yes, use with caution. After you enable Audit Setup Activity, go to Change Lease to bring up the lease with the incorrect interest paid amount. Since we have the Audit Setup Activity enabled, it's prompting us to print a report of the changes we make in the Change Lease window. Go to the Deposits tab, locate the appropriate deposit type, and enter the correct interest payment amount. Remember, you can only change this amount if you enable the Audit Setup activity. Click Close when you're done. And I should probably run the Lease Deposits report to make sure that the amounts are correct. Yes. Now, what do you think you should do next? Ah, I know what needs to be done. Turn off Audit Setup activity. That's right. And it's very important that you remember to do that. And where do I generate the returns? In the Tasks menu, there's an item called eFile Form 1099, where you can generate eFile forms through Atrix software. You can generate both 1099 and 1096 forms. This task provides a step-by-step -step process where you specify the leases to include. There's also a step to review and edit the filing information before you generate the forms. When you use this task to generate 1099s, you can print copy B for the recipients on the blank perforated forms. In fact, if you don't have time to print and mail the copies out yourself, Atrix software can do it for you. It can even go paperless and deliver the recipient copies electronically. All you need to do is to generate the filing information and Atrix will handle the rest. I'll show you how it works in a moment. In this first screen, you enter some preliminary information to get started. Select the properties for which you're generating 1099s. You can select multiple properties as long as they share the same fiscal entity level and their period end date is in the same year. This task generates 1099s for one payer during each run. To select more than one property, hold the control key down on your keyboard and click in the column next to property ID. The federal ID number for the payer comes from the fiscal entity's prefix setup in General Ledger. If you didn't put a number on the prefix setup or if the number was entered incorrectly there, you can enter it here. If you want to pull the payer information from the prefix setup for the form, 
like the address and phone number, leave the payer source to GL prefix. When the payer source is set to data folder, the payer information is pulled from the company settings window for the form. In this training data set, only leases for Pacific Building have reportable amounts, so I'm going to change my selection. And select the correct reporting year for your filing. Don't forget to put in the minimum reporting amount. You can find out what it is from the IRS instructions. The next screen shows you a list of leases that fit the criteria from the last screen. And they're all checkmarked to be included for this run. If for some reason you need to exclude one or more leases, select the row and uncheck the box. You can hold the control key down on your keyboard and select one or more rows. Then use the space bar to select or clear the boxes. You can also use the Select None and Select All buttons to clear or select all the checkboxes at once. When you're ready, click Next. Now that you've completed the preliminary information, you can begin to generate the 1099s. Click Generate. In the 1099 Setup Wizard, you can choose to do a test run of all the leases or the first 25. If you choose a test run, you can review the information and see how the process works, but it doesn't save your work. If you choose the last option to start processing, you can save your work to review or change later. Click Next. Verify the payer's tax ID number. This is the federal ID number from the very first screen and will be used to generate all the forms. If this number is wrong, click Cancel and begin the task again, this time entering the correct tax ID number. Click Next. If you have leases stored in different data files and you're reporting them under the same payer's federal ID number, you can use the Multiple Data File Merge feature to merge them together so all the information is combined when you're printing or e-filing your 1099s. Click Next. The payer information comes from the software, either from the company settings window or from the prefix setup. Complete any missing information, or if needed, you can change the information that's automatically entered. Click Next. Select the preparer type and click Next. Enter your state tax account number for 1099 state reporting. Click Add. Select the state and type of tax and enter the tax account number. If you skip entering the state tax information in the 1099 setup wizard here, you can still access this screen later in the preparer window through Edit Company Setup. Click Next. Are there recipients who would prefer to receive their copy of the 1099 electronically? If so, select Yes here. Later, you can indicate which leases they are and enter their email information. Take note that you must have written consent from the recipients in order to send them electronic 1099 returns. SAGE has a blank consent form that you can send to your tenants. It's attached to Knowledge Base Article 87584. If this is your final return, select Yes and then click Next. In the Recipient Identification Number step, indicate how you want to format the recipient's tax ID number and how zeros should appear on their copy. Click Next. Based on the information stored in the database, the system creates a spreadsheet listing the leases for which a 1099 will be generated. The leases are in the rows, and the columns represent boxes on the 1099. You can use the scroll bars to see additional columns. Let's compare the spreadsheet to an actual 1099 form. The columns in the left area of the spreadsheet are for the recipient information. 
The columns in the right area of the spreadsheet are for the reportable amounts. The 1099 Preparer window is a wizard, and each step prompts you to verify the information that's highlighted in the grid. If you've already used Property Management Report to verify the lease and tenant information, then everything should be correct. At any step, if the system detects a problem, it will alert you. And the errors are highlighted in red. You can enter information in any column to have it print on the 1099. What you enter here only affects this spreadsheet and does not change the information stored in property management. For example, this recipient's 1099 mailing address is different from what's stored in property management. Click in the cell and type over the information. Remember, this does not affect the address stored on the tenant record. If you had selected yes to electronically deliver the recipient copies in the wizard, the grid displays the electronic only and electronic delivery columns. Select the electronic only checkbox for any recipient who wishes to receive an electronic copy of the 1099 rather than a hard copy and enter their email address in the electronic delivery column. When you complete your filing with Atrix later, you can choose whether to notify these recipients by letter or by email to provide them with instructions on how to download their recipient copy. If electronic delivery applies to all the leases, right-click on the Electronic Only column and select Select All to select the checkboxes. You can copy email addresses from a list and press Ctrl-V on your keyboard to paste the information in the Electronic Delivery column. Let's continue with our review. The columns on the right represent reportable amounts on the 1099. Property management generates the amount in box 1, interest income. If you need to change this amount or report an amount in any other box, just type it in the spreadsheet so it prints on the form. You can also add or remove recipients from the spreadsheet. For example, the system generated one record for a recipient, but you need to send out two 1099s. Right-click in the Number column and select Insert to add a new row, and you can type in the information for the recipient. When you're working in the spreadsheet, you can use the Edit menu to sort the information or use Company Setup to go back to the Payer Information window to make any changes if needed. If this is not a test run, you can save your work and come back to it later. When the information in the spreadsheet is complete, click Next. In this window, you choose how you want to generate the forms and file the returns. For a small fee, you can let Atrix print and mail the 1099s to the recipients and e-file the returns for you. But if you'd rather handle this yourself, select Other Options. You can print copy B for the recipients and let Atrix e-file the returns for you. E-filing the federal copy through Atrix is free of charge, so take advantage of this. You can also print the federal and state copies and mail them in. In that case, you can uncheck the e-file options. In this demonstration, we'll check all the boxes so you can see what happens. Click Next. Review the list of forms that you're about to generate. You can print this list out for your records. Click Next. And look! The completed forms appear on your screen. You can tell the form and copy type by the name listed on the top yellow bar. Notice the arrows on the upper left-hand corner. You can use them to scroll from page to page to review the information. Follow the instructions to print the copies and then click Next Step to go to the next set of reports until you're finished. 
When you're all done with the reports, if you had chosen the e-filing option, it will take you to the Atrix e-file center. If you're already enrolled with Atrix, log in with your ID to complete the e-filing process. If you're not enrolled yet, you can click Enroll to register. To go back to your saved work, start the Form 1099 task again. And choose Saved 1099 Report. Select the payer's federal ID number. Select the 1099 report. Use the buttons at the top of this window to view, print, or edit the reports. Yuna, thanks for all your help. No problem. Now you know where the data is pulled from for the 1099 interest income forms and where to go to check for accurate information before you file the returns. And now you should also be able to generate and file your 1099s.